Hey there, how are you doing? My name is Nikita. I am Nikita Chavda and today I'm going to be going ahead and taking up this fundraiser course that you have signed up for. It's called the Coronavirus or the COVID-19 Awareness uh, Workshop of sorts that we have going on today. Firstly, before we get started about um, anything or with anything, I would highly, highly, highly like to appreciate and thank you for coming ahead and, you know, uh, being part of of this journey with us like you know the state in india is very very bad right now the number of cases are rising depending on the place you're living in you may or may not be in lockdown right now so it is a very sad state of affairs that we are in today and it is extremely lovely to have people like you join us today as part of this fundraiser and take part to help someone out there whoever it is that we are going to be helping tomorrow it could be someone that we're providing oxygen with it could be someone we're providing a bed with it could be someone we're just providing food to so anybody and everybody who we are going to go ahead and help with this money and this initiative will be so grateful for the effort that you are making today so thank you thank you thank you so much from our end uh, for you to go ahead and join this initiative that you are joining in right now now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what we are going to be talking about today. Like I told you, uh, this course or this workshop of sorts, uh, this one day, one hour workshop is uh, basically about COVID-19 and it's going to be sort of like an awareness. Now I'm going to be talking about several things um, in this uh, class that we have today and we're also going to be going ahead and drawing a poster of sorts. Now to explain better, I'm going to break everything down, give you sort of an introduction and then we can move ahead with what we actually want to do today. So firstly, what we're going to do as part of normally or as part of all of our classes, I like to go ahead and give a bunch of information like a general knowledge, um, you know, scheme of sorts wherein I'm giving you a good amount of awareness for whatever topic I've picked up. And since today our topic is going to be COVID-19, that is the topic I'm going to be discussing. Now alongside to make it uh, informative as well as easy to understand with visual representations, we tend to go ahead and create a poster or an illustration or drawing or painting something on the side. Now in today's class I obviously wanted it to be something like a story of the events that was basically took place all over the world in India and how COVID-19 has affected everybody's lives and to make it very very useful to um, whoever is attending this course I wanted to make it in a way that it was simple to go ahead and draw plus at the end you get a representation of everything that you can go ahead and explain to someone later. So to give you an example, this is what we are going to be creating um, in today's class. It's sort of like a map of a visual map of everything that happens. Now, what you can do and what you can get out of this is basically that whatever I teach you today, whatever information I provide to you today, you can actually go ahead, share this or explain this to anybody and further share this information. Because you will have like a mind map of everything that took place. And if someone is not aware or someone is, you know, looking to gain information, you could be that friend, you could be that person, you could be um, that, uh, you know, of, you know, person who's informed about all the things that took place. And it would be so, so, so great um, for you to go ahead and spread as much knowledge as you can to go ahead and help people all around India and the world. Now, depending on, you know, uh, wherever you are right now, it doesn't matter. It is a hard time for everybody. So as much as information as you can, you know, go ahead and share that would be amazing and great. So now let's break down all of the things that we're actually going to be, you know, um, learning about the day. Let me break it down in categories because I already have a mind map on how I want to go ahead and talk to you about the whole COVID-19 or coronavirus situation that we are currently facing, the crisis that we've been going through. So first thing that I want to go ahead and discuss with you is where COVID-19 came off or where coronavirus came from. That's going to be our essential topic number one. After that, we're going to go ahead and discuss how it spread across the world. So 
that's going to be our topic number two. Then we're going to go ahead and talk about how it has affected people all around the world. So that's going to be our topic number three. So every person in this world has got affected by coronavirus or COVID-19 in some way or the other. So we're going to talk about that in three separate categories. The categories are going to be individually how it has affected people. Second is how our healthcare systems have got affected. And finally, how our economy has gotten affected. So these are going to be the three categories that we'll be discussing as part of our top, uh, the third uh, topic that we are going to be taking up. After that, what we're going to be doing is in under our individual health and under our individual um, you know section i want to go ahead and discuss two things that are very 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 important as part of this class and i did not want to go ahead and leave out at all so this is going to be a very big portion of our um, you know course which is going to be me talking to you about all of the symptoms of covid-19 that we have these are going to be symptoms that were part of the first wave and the second wave so everything combined is something that each and every one of us should know about and should be aware of. So I'm going to be talking to you about the symptoms and not only the symptoms, but I'm also going to be talking to you about the precautions, preventions and the vaccination systems that we have all over the world as well as India. It is very important again um, to know one is what is causing it. Second is to know all the symptoms and third is how to handle the situation. So I am going to be discussing that third point, which is going to be um, the precautions, preventions, and the vaccination drives that we have going around all over the world. Now, finally, obviously, I want to go ahead and localize everything about COVID-19 and coronavirus. I do not want it to be, um, you know, us just discussing all about it around the world, especially because in the second wave, India is being hit the most. So I want to make it a local topic, something that, you know, we all are currently facing. So it is very important for us to know what is happening happening in our own nation. So I'm going to be going ahead and doing a second page of a poster like this, where we're going to be going ahead and talking about the COVID-19 situation, specifically in India. Now here again, I'm going to break it up in a little bit of a format wherein I'm going to go ahead and talk about firstly, how it origin, how it came to India, where the first case was, then I'll talk about the uh, you know, first wave that we had in India, the first set of lockdowns. After that, what happened in India, how people got affected, and then the second wave that is currently taking place in India. And again, the precautions that you need to go ahead and take, whether you are in lockdown, whether you are not in lockdown, it doesn't matter. It is our responsibility as human beings to take care of ourselves, our friends, our family, our colleagues, and our society as a whole. So, you know, this whole course, like you can tell, I have been basically divided up in a specific way so as to make it as informative and as knowledgeable for you, you know, um, I want it to be something that you can go ahead and create and learn today and share with everybody around you. So make, make, make sure of that, that you go ahead and do that. Now, just a heads up before we get started um, with, you know, everything. Um, we also have a course uh, that I have basically gone ahead and created about the same COVID-19 awareness, just that it's broken up into five days and everything that we discussed today will be discussed a little bit more in detail over there. So if you want to go ahead and take up that course, then you can go ahead and take up that course too. But today will be sort of like a run through of everything that I discussed over there. Um, I'm going to be discussing all of the important points. So you will get all of the information that you need today if you have to just go ahead and give a quick brief to someone or you know you just want to go ahead and gather all of that quick general knowledge about COVID-19 or coronavirus in the world then this will be a good quick start but if you want to go ahead and dwell deeper into you know um, what it is how it is going and you know every class specifically about uh, the topics that we are going to be discussing then you can go ahead and especially attend that course as well because it's going to really really help you out um, and in that as well every class we will do a separate poster so this we are doing two posters but in that we'll be doing a poster every class so depending on how much knowledge you want to gather you can go ahead and take that course up if you like as well it's a five-day course and it's going to be continuously from monday to friday um you know and it's just going to be a really really nice course so now let's get started with um you know this course over here um first we're going to go ahead and start off with the materials that you need um to go ahead and start off with today's course 
So the first thing that you need for today's class is obviously going to be a sheet of paper for you to go ahead and draw on or illustrate on or doodle on. It could be a sketchbook like I have here. It could be a drawing book. It could be a journal book. If you do not have a book of sorts that has an unruled sheet of paper, then you can go ahead and take any unruled, uh, you know, loose sheet of paper or an A4 size sheet of paper or any drawing sheet that you can basically find around you. The second thing that you will need uh, as part of the Today's session is going to be a bunch of sketch pen. Sketch pens. You can go ahead and use any set of sketch pens that you have around you. You can go ahead and use the agile ones like I have here. If you have Doms, if you have Faber Castle, whatever set of sketch pens would do. Just make sure you have a variety of colors. And if you do not have a variety of colors, that's absolutely fine. You can always go ahead and use as many colors as you have. If again you do not have the options of using uh, sketch pens at all, then you can go ahead and use a black color marker or a black color pen or a pencil and then later on fill with any colors that you have for example you can use crayons color pencils you can go ahead and use wax um, you know uh, pastels you can use soft pastels whatever you have later on with you to fill up this piece of picture would absolutely work so those are the few things that you will need for today's class now what we are going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and start off with this um, informative class with where COVID-19 started. So firstly, let's go ahead and draw the virus itself. I'm taking a black color marker right here and drawing sort of like a wiggly line with a bunch of lines coming out on the side as a representation of the virus. And then I'm taking a light blue sketch pen and I'm going to go ahead and draw a bunch of dots in the center. Now here, please uh, go ahead and switch up the colors if you like. You do not have to go ahead um, and use exactly the same colors that I am using. You can go ahead and use whatever colors you like whenever you like. Okay, so just make sure of that. Certain spaces where you will have to use specific colors, I will let you know, but apart from that, feel free. Okay, so COVID-19 or coronavirus is basically a virus that is currently infecting all of us, like you already know. And uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus, they say, comes uh, from you know, some form of animal strain. So it is uh, highly, highly, highly present as a virus in animals, but it is now converted or mutated into a human strain that is affecting all of us today. So now where uh, does this uh, virus actually come from? Like what is the place that it originated from? So let's go ahead and draw the China flag. We are not going to be drawing the detailed China flag right here. So I'm going to be taking a black color sketch pen. I'm going to be taking a black color marker again and going ahead and drawing um, the outline of the flag and filling up the uh, flag bit of it with red. If you do not have red, leave that part behind and you can go ahead and use um, a color sketch, you know, crayon, whatever later to go ahead and fill with red. But make sure it's red because the Chinese flag is red. And this is one of the spots where there is no exception in terms of the color change. Just make sure you go ahead and use it. So now in China, specifically, where did the virus originate from? Now, in China, in 2019, around, um, you know, November, December was the time where in a small place called Wuhan City, um, the virus originated. Now, here what started happening was a lot of people started falling sick. But like, you know, the COVID, um, you know, symptoms or the virus is very, very ordinary. And it seems almost like a cough and cold. So people started falling sick, but a lot of people just assumed it to be falling sick like a cough and cold and nothing, some, not something something really, really big. Now, apart from that, like apart from following sick of having a cold cough or a basic fever, there were a lot of other people who may have been infected already, but are asymptomatic. Now, what does asymptomatic mean? I will get into that a little bit later, but to give you just a small gist of it, asymptomatic is someone who is infected, but is not showing any symptoms. So there must be a lot of people who are also asymptomatic at that point of time. And uh, the virus basically uh, spreads through air, uh, spreads through, you know, saliva, water, any water molecules, it also spreads through. 
and basically that's how it was infecting people so one person was being infected another person was being infected so on and so forth different 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 people were getting infected and in wuhan city was the first place that was hit with the covid-19 strain or the virus now where did the virus actually originate from now like i told you that you know the covid uh, you know virus or the corona virus basically did exist in animals so there are theories that it exists in you know different different animals like bats it uh, you know exists in cows it exists in different animals but they specifically say that this virus that is affecting us human beings comes from bats so we're going to go ahead and draw an arrow and specifically draw a bat so i'm going to be doing an arrow and i'm going to be going ahead and drawing a curve like this sort of like an oval filling it in uh, with black i'm drawing two simple ears and i'm going to draw two dashes for the feet drawing two curves on either side and drawing the wings now this is going to be my a bat representation of um, covid uh, you know where it originated from. from all right okay so now they say that covid-19 basically went ahead and came from bats uh so they do say there is a theory that exists currently uh, that someone in wuhan china in a live market was eating a bat and that's where the person got infected from but nobody really knows because there are varied theories about covid-19 so nobody really knows but the confirmation is definitely that it is the bat strain that has affected people now how it came into the human being is a very very well debated you know concept that nobody has you know finally concluded on and nobody really knows on but this is a theory so if anybody asks you you can give this as a fun fact and tell them that this may or may not exist we don't know and then you know you guys can debate about what you think or what you believe as part of um you know what is exactly happening now this was the year 2019 so i want to mark that date down because it's very very important and essential because it's called covid-19 so covid um based on the year 2019 now obviously it has a, a definition with the name but it also has a definition in another way that is once people are getting a, a you know infected and affected by the virus um there is a world health organization body which basically identifies such uh, viruses and names it and gives it a meaning now whether it is going to affect people all around the world whether you know people can say safe what is happening you know with this infection or this virus how many people can fall sick so like you know we have the un like that we have the who who is also the body uh, who basically undertook the concept of studying the corona virus they studied it and then they finally declared on 31st december 2019 that is uh, the day we were going to transition into 2020 that uh, the corona virus uh, or covid-19 is basically a full fledged pandemic now what is a pandemic a pandemic is basically an infection or a virus that is going to go ahead and spread all around the world it can affect a lot of people and a lot of things um can get affected in this so this is obviously going to affect human beings and their health is going to affect the economy it's going to affect the travel plans of people is going to affect everything so you know going into a pandemic is very scary and you all are living in it right now uh, and you do know the repercussions of getting into a pandemic but it was officially announced on 31st december 20 a 19 that we are going into a pandemic so now let's discuss about how covid-19 um you do know that covid-19 originated from china and in a city called wuhan but how did it go ahead and spread all over the world so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw an arrow coming out from uh, china and i'm going to go ahead and uh, draw a globe or a circle i'm going to be taking a blue marker and a green marker to go ahead and mark mark out sort of like you know spots uh, to make it look like we have a globe right here okay so here i'm basically just drawing the representation of earth and you know our planet earth and you know these are the international homelands that we have and how everybody um, you know got infected so that is the theory that i want to explain to you i'm going to take a black marker and draw a bunch of dots all around um, earth like the travel and the travel uh, of how it infected people now here i don't want to end here i want to go ahead and draw another uh, arrow and draw 
an aeroplane i'm taking a blue color sketch pen here you can go ahead and take whatever color sketch pen you like to go ahead and draw this plane and then i will explain to you how and uh, you know how it traveled and affected everybody internationally all right okay so now we spoke about how it originated in china but as you know all of us are pretty much infected by covid-19 right um, so how did it travel so the thing that happened was when a new strain of a virus like covid-19 is basically found people have to firstly figure out what the symptoms look like now it took some time but people figured out that people could be symptomatic or asymptomatic and the concept of testing started later now before that concept even started obviously people were traveling for economic purposes for tourist purposes or for any other purposes personal reasons uh, to different different countries so maybe someone travel to china to wuhan city or someone from wuhan city travel to some other place in china and then from china they travel somewhere else to the world now obviously our world is interconnected and people fly all around right so in the same manner what started happening was probably someone who was infected started traveling and corona virus finally reached most countries even if it did not reach Uh, you know one country at a uh, one point of time eventually most countries all around the world were affected and infected by the virus some in very very high intense intensity and some in a little lower intensity so that is how it traveled now let's move on to how it affected everybody internationally um, and i'm going to be dividing this into three so i'm going to be drawing three arrows right here as you can see in the first arrow i'm going to go ahead and draw a medical symbol Uh, i'm drawing just a simple plus as my medical symbol to identify um the healthcare systems i'm going to be going ahead and taking a red color sketch pen to draw sort of like a, a human being so i'm just drawing the body and the head coloring both of those in um uh, explaining it to be individual health and lastly i'm going to be taking a green color sketch pen and marking out a sort of like a long rectangle to be uh, finances or the economy or money now here like i mentioned uh, covid-19 did affect the world all around and i wanted to explain to you how it affected the world in three separate ways so the first way like i said was uh, the healthcare systems second was the individual system and third was the economy let's start off with the individual way now individually um, all of us got affected in many many ways and how did we all get affected firstly like you all know um, the basic way everybody got affected was that people started falling sick with the covid-19 virus or the corona virus so people uh, many people all around the world got infected with corona virus and like you all know there are several symptoms of covid-19 which we will go ahead and discuss later but apart from all of those symptoms covid-19 tends to have a very very long lasting effect on health a lot of people even after recovery uh, do tend to face weakness they do tend to you know um, have a lot of uh, healthcare issues and so on and so forth and apart from that those who were infected with covid-19 the loss of work that they faced the loss of health that they face the loss of family time because of isolation that they have to face the mental health issues that they all face everything was affected by covid-19 now apart from uh, general health because of the virus being affected there are many other things that an individual did face one is the concept of you know isolation and 6 uh, feet distancing now what i mean by isolation is uh, for all of those who were infected with the virus they opt they went through isolation but isolation also in terms of when the lockdowns were put all around the world now you do know india has gone into several lockdowns whether it is a state wise lockdown or it is a country or nation wide lockdown you do understand the concept of lockdowns and many 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 countries also went into the lockdowns many of them were fortunate enough for example i was very fortunate enough to go into lockdown into in with in my house with my family being safe and secure but there were a lot of individuals out there who probably are living alone 
probably are living with a friend, um, you know, probably do not have anybody and who have lived in isolation for a very, very long time. Now, even if you're living with family or whether you're living uh, alone, you know the mental health issues that a lot of us tend to face with the fact that we cannot go out, we cannot meet our friends, we cannot do anything. Um, we also had to make a lot of lifestyle changes. For example, uh, probably your parents or, you know, if you have uncles and aunts, um, you have cousins who are much older to you, you would have seen all of them would have started working from home and you personally would have gone ahead and started studying from home. So even education of yours, your parents' work, all of that started getting affected. Now, apart from that, you also had to maintain six feet uh, social distancing. So the load and eventuality of, you know, when lockdowns opened up and people could go out, even when you did go out, you had to be extra, extra careful. Even today, you have to be extra careful. It is not really that simple as just walking out of the house and, you know, going ahead and doing whatever you like. It is a mental burden that all of us face that, you know, we have to be well equipped to go out, um, you know, whether you're going to go ahead and take a public transport, whether you're taking a private transport, whatever you're going to go ahead and take, you need to be in caution. You want to sanitize, you want to go ahead and have your mask on. All of that is very, very important. And we have all been affected with our day-to-day -day living and daily lives in that manner. Now, I have gone ahead and spoken a lot about individual health and how individually we were affected. So now let's go ahead and talk about how the healthcare system or that purple plus sign that I have gone ahead and drawn uh, got affected. Now, obviously, when the COVID-19 uh, strain first emerged, uh, people were really confused on how to go ahead and treat the illness because it is such a virus that nobody has faced before. Now, when there is something new, it is challenging even for people who are very, very knowledgeable because all of these people are facing something that they have never seen before. So two things that were very, very confusing for all of the healthcare workers and researchers was one, what all the symptoms could be and two what happens when people are asymptomatic Now, when people are asymptomatic they are very very healthy and they're doing completely fine but they have to go into isolation so that was one of the things that researchers had to figure out eventually because you do not want people to get uh, infected further and further now, the second thing that did happen also was the people who were affected, how to go ahead and handle them, what are all the things that they need, how can you provide them the best medical attention that they require to heal and get back on their feet. So what started happening was people were a, trying to figure out what was uh, going to be best for their patients and B, also the load of patients on hospitals and on doctors became very, very high. Now, like you know, in hospitals you just do not have you know doctors you have doctors you have nurses you have interns you have residents you also have um, you know staff who's cooking cleaning um, helping out with the medical uh, you know essentials you also have uh, transport workers you also have pharmacies you have doctors sitting at pharmacies providing medication so what happened was everybody is well equipped to go ahead and provide for the number of people falling sick on a day-to-day -day basis but when a covid uh, you know 19 sort of illness comes into play or a virus like this comes into play what tends to happen is all of these people need to overwork and over you know uh, be present and be there to go ahead and help out as much as possible. So the number of hospitals that we did have or we do have right now may or may not be able to take the load of the patients or the number of patients falling sick. So the healthcare institutions hence you know were affected immensely because they weren't really prepared for something like this to come in. Then the doctors as well were affected very 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 highly because many of them had to work overtime or had to stay in hospitals for very 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 long time you know for a couple of days a lot of the times helping COVID patients um, a lot of the times they did not know how to help because they didn't know the exact symptoms of COVID-19 but they tried their best now obviously as the doctors um, they do also have family so they're uh, indirectly their families were also affected um, by not seeing uh, them uh, unfortunately one thing that you know I do not want to discuss because you guys are still young but I feel you do need to have awareness of was that a lot of lives were also lost um, 
from the healthcare system and even as part of individual lives many were lost because of covid-19 because of something called uh, people having comorbidities now even though the symptoms of covid-19 tend to be um, not very very uh, harsh many people do face it harsh but many people don't um, what tends to happen is when people have comorbidities for example if they have diabetes they are obese they have bp things like that their body cannot handle two things at a time so they are not really able to handle it so medically it becomes very very hard to help these kind of patients and you know um, it it just becomes really really hard to you know take care of them now apart from the medical um, you know effect that uh, covid-19 had all over the world as well as individual um, the individually how people were affected the economy as a whole was also affected now if you have economics right now uh, you know and you're studying it or if you don't whatever it is you do know that economy runs by people buying and selling now since people buy and sell and that is how they live the amount of buying and selling with covid -19 in completely reduced and hence there was a fall in growth rate in the economy now this uh, i do not know whether you will understand this thoroughly or not but mainly what happens is uh, when the growth rate you know comes down the amount of money to give people reduces and hence what happens is a lot of people started losing their jobs a very simple example to make you understand would be that you do have a lot of people working in your schools maybe you have your imrs whether you have your security guards whether you have you know extra staff helping you to go from from class to class or cooking for you or whatever now when schools shut down which has been shut down for a very very long time all of these people's lost jobs because schools themselves don't have money to keep the school running so what happens is these people lose their jobs and then they do not have money for survival so the economy like that was slowly 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 crashing and it is a very sad thing to see not just because uh, you know the growth rate is decreasing but because because if the growth rate of the economy reduces then people who are already in need or who have financial difficulties will have more and more financial difficulties which is extremely sad and you know um something that nobody should go ahead and face so that was an effect of covid-19 as well now let's move on to talking about the two major important chunks that i definitely wanted to go ahead and discuss with you all which is mainly about the symptoms of covid-19 then i want to go ahead and discuss about the prevention precaution and vaccination actually let's go ahead and first discuss about prevention uh, precaution and vaccination so what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and take my green color marker and i'm going to divide uh, this from the person i'm taking out two arrows and i'm going to again take my green color marker and draw a center dotted line sort of like a division between the two things that i want to go ahead and discuss now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start on uh, this side i'm going to be taking just a simple blue color marker and i'm going to go ahead and draw everything out so the first thing that i'm drawing is a simple blue color mask all right so now let's go ahead and start off by talking about the prevention precautions and vaccination systems that we have in place in order to help us with this very tragic uh, crisis that we are facing currently all right before we go ahead and actually um discuss about all of these things let's go ahead and actually doodle out everything so it will be easier for you to understand because you'll actually have a visual representation representation of everything that i'm talking about so here i've gone ahead and drawn a mask alongside the mask i'm going to go ahead and draw a simple sanitizer bottle now look at how easy these illustrations are it's just a simple rectangle with a dot in the center and a line here i have a bunch of medicines that i am going ahead and and drawing after that i'm going to go ahead and draw a really really easy thermometer or like um a, a, you know a device that basically checks your temperature and finally i'm going to go ahead and again draw the medical cross um so that you know i can go ahead and now explain everything to you so make sure you draw all of these while i am talking um take your time in drawing all of it because i'm done drawing and i'm going to be giving you information you just listen and draw at the same time all right so firstly let's discuss about what is prevention what is precaution and what is vaccination 
prevention is basically um basically a form of taking a measures in which you do not have to face something so prevention basically is a way in which you avoid something happening so preventive measures in covid-19 are really 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 simple so like you all know it basically people get infected um through water that is water molecules sweat saliva things like that sneezing phlegm all of that as well as it is airborne right so it goes through in the air now a big 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 preventive measure that everybody saw was which was very important was the fact of maintaining social distancing or the fact of staying home now what happens if you stay home and what happens if you social distance now if you are staying at home it's the best preventive measure because the thing is you are not actually meeting anybody if you do not meet anybody then there will be nobody who's in affected around you who can possibly give you the virus so one of the biggest preventive measures is you know staying at home and staying as much as possible away from people now the second thing in this that i was talking about in terms of social distancing again is a very 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 preventive measure because the more distance you maintain from people the less of the chance of the virus coming at affecting you because you're maintaining maintaining a good amount of distance so the 6 feet distance is what everybody has you know decided and told that that is the best from medical practitioners practitioners they have given us that information that you know 6 feet distance is the or you know optimal wherein the virus cannot travel from one person to another so you know very very simple just maintaining distance is also a very 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 high preventive measure and now the preventive measure which will uh, you know basically explain uh, the pills or the medicines that i have there is basically building up one's immunity now you may not be able to prevent falling sick or getting covid-19 maybe you will end up getting covid-19 but one big preventive measure in terms of falling very very badly sick is having a wonderful and a great immunity now if we all are very very healthy and we all have great immunity systems what will happen is you may get the virus but you will be easily able to fight off the virus which is an essential you need to be able to fight off the virus even if you get it so that is another thing now another preventive uh, measure in terms of uh, covid-19 is obviously going to be masking now earlier on we all used to wear single mask whether it was a cloth mask a surgical mask or it was an n95 mask but currently they say double masking is the best having one you know a uh, surgical mask or having one n95 mask with a cloth mask on top uh, especially with, with your mouth and your nose completely covered is an essential so another preventive measure is going to be obviously masking the third thing is going to uh, the next thing sorry is going to be uh, to sanitize or wash your hands now you like you know covid-19 dies with alcohol uh, in which sanitizers are made out of alcohol or washing your hands with soap in the specific covid-19 wash technique uh, will prevent the virus from staying on your body if you have got it and finally one of the other measures that is very very important is uh, you know checking your temperature wherever you can so this is something that everybody has seen happen very very much around you now this can also be considered as a precautionary measure wherein people basically to you know maintain a caution that they are going ahead and checking temperature now before i explain all the precautionary measures i want to go ahead and explain to you what precaution basically is now precautionary measures are basically a way in which you are cautious or you are you know aware of or you are you know taking prerequisites to be aware that you do not get infected now the idea basically is that you know since the virus is in the air and it is outside you go ahead and take certain measures in which you are able to be cautious of the fact that you are not around people or you are not in a place where people are falling sick now hence the concept of if people have a fever or not if people do not have you know a fever then the lesser the chances of them having uh, covid-19 because a 
lot of people tend to fall sick after getting COVID-19. So if your temperature check is normal, then you can specifically tell that, you know, these many people in this room is in, aren't specifically, uh, you know, falling sick. So that is one of the precautionary measures that you can take when it comes to COVID-19. Another precautionary measure, um, which is, you know, a must, and I feel everybody should, you know, remember this, though it's not mentioned uh, very often, is that if you do fall sick, if you fall sick and it may isn't the virus, you know, you get a test and it isn't a virus, then to take care of your health even when you're sick. So take all of the medical attention that you need, and hence I've gone ahead and draw that cross. Go ahead and take all of the medical attention that you need to get better and again get your immunity as strong as possible. Because you know, this is a time where you can be sick, things can happen to you, and that's completely okay. But if you can get back on your feet and be healthy, then that will also prevent you or, you know, be a sort of a good space for you to be in so that you do not catch the virus, even if you come in contact with anybody who has a virus. Now, another few precautionary measures that have been set up by the government of India um, and, you know, many governments all around the world is the concept of isolation. So when people travel from state to state, they go into 14 days of isolation so as uh, to not spread, uh, you know, the virus because many people get infected only after a few days. So the concept of 14 day isolation isolation. The concept of taking an RT-PCR test as well is a precautionary measure because, you know, if you come negative in the test and then you go ahead and travel or then you go ahead and meet someone, then you are 100% sure that, you know, you do not have COVID-19 and, you know, you are at a lower risk of spreading the virus because you don't have it. So, you know, it is something uh, that is really, really essential. So these were the precautionary measures. Now, I want to go ahead and also dwell a little bit into the vaccination drive. Now, when COVID-19, um, you know, started in 2019, but through the year of 2020, um, we did have the concepts of, you know, people and medical practitioners researching in order to create a vaccine. It took a little bit of time um, for people to finally come up with the vaccine because vaccination drives have basically started this year um, in around 2020, November, December, and finally in India in 2021. Um, but the concept of vaccination basically really, really helps because, you know, it provides uh, for a sense of immunity towards the virus. Now, vaccination does not mean that you're 100%, uh, you know, cured uh, and you cannot get coronavirus you can still get coronavirus but it gives you at least a chance and it gives you a good percentage of immunity um, that you will not get infected by the virus um, now there are many many um, you know uh, vaccinations that have come up in India we have Covishield we have Covaxin uh, abroad we have Pfizer uh, we have uh, J&J you know we have all of those vaccines coming in so depending on where you are living all around the world people are going ahead and taking vaccines so that was another major development that basically happened now let's go ahead and talk about all of the symptoms of COVID-19 or coronavirus, which I definitely wanted to go ahead and discuss with you. Um, so let's talk about uh, all of the uh, you know, uh, symptoms. Now, talking about all of the symptoms, it can be a little hard to go ahead and draw the symptoms. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and draw a bunch of bubbles and I'm going to go ahead and write down all of the symptoms that I did there, keeping it really simple and easy so that, you know, whenever you go ahead and show this chart to someone, it's very self-explanatory as to what the symptoms of COVID-19 are. So the first, um, you know, symptom of COVID-19 is basically fever. A lot of people People tend to have higher temperature, body temperatures, and this is one of the first ones. Uh, the second one is basically getting a cough and a cold, having a sore throat. The third one is getting really, really tired and fatigued. It's a very, very common one. The fourth one is pink eye. A lot of people get a redness in their eye or a pinkish tinge in their eye, and that is one of the very, very common symptoms of COVID-19. Um, the fifth one is going to be aches. This could be body ache, headache, muscle pain, back 
pain all of that is something that happens very very commonly lastly we have two major symptoms that everybody tends to sort of face um and it's a very weird symptom to have that they have loss of taste and they have loss of smell so those are the other two symptoms that people tend to have now did i i didn't mention that people tend to be symptomatic and asymptomatic so let's talk about people uh, who are asymptomatic now asymptomatic uh, the meaning of asymptomatic is that when the body is normal when they fall sick they show symptoms so these are all the symptoms so these are the unusual characteristics that we find in a person and it shows that they are fallen sick but a lot of the times they may be infected but they're not showing anything unusual in their body those people are called asymptomatic now covid comes in two ways a lot of people get asymptomatic and a lot of people get symptomatic so it is easy to figure out if you are symptomatic with covid if you know all of these things and you are showing the symptoms but be aware there can also be people who are asymptomatic and still have the covid-19 strain in them all right so now we have gone ahead and completed a good chunk of everything that is happening all around the world i want to now go ahead and discuss a little bit about india we have like around 15 minutes to go so i want to definitely go ahead and discuss everything about you know uh, how covid-19 was faced by the indian society so what i'm going to go ahead and do right now is i'm going ahead and drawing a simple indian flag with a black color marker and you can go ahead and do the same thing with me right now just draw a really really simple indian flag i'm taking an orange color sketch pen to color the top a light green color sketch pen at the bottom and then i'm going to go ahead and take a blue color marker to draw the ashoka chakra right at the center perfect now let's talk about uh, when covid-19 and when the first case of corona virus basically started or came into india the first case of covid-19 came in india in january of 20 20 um in kerala the state of kerala was the first place to see an inf infected person it was a lady um who got infected with covid-19 the first case that we found in india and um you know she was infected the first one but she was symptomatic so people don't really know whether that was the first case or not so it's 27 january 2020 almost um 27 days after it was announced to be a pandemic we had our first case in india now next what i'm going to go ahead and draw is i'm going to go ahead and draw sort of like a graph so i'm going to go ahead and draw a line up and a line down and drawing a bunch of dashes and i'm going to go ahead and draw a curve with a flat line now this i am going ahead and showing you because it's going to be a good explanation of all of the events that took place right after covid reached india now what happened was from january to march we had this up cycle line that you see right here we had this growth of the number of cases that were basically happening in india now what that basically meant was that the number of people getting infected in india were becoming more and more and more and hence because of that there needed to be something done by the government of india and there was pretty much the same uh, thing that was seeing all around the world wherein people had started falling sick and uh, the governments were basically handling it by going ahead and putting in a lockdown now if you remember uh, last year in 2020 on 22nd of march we had the janta curfew and after which on 24th of march we went into a complete lockdown for 21 days after which it was an extended lockdown for another 14 days and another 14 days so totally we were in lockdown for about two and a half months till the end of may uh, and you know this was the whole time that we were all in lockdown and we were all you know at our homes now the reason why everybody went into lockdown is again the graph will make you understand is basically there were people getting infected but we wanted to go ahead and bring it down and flat line it now what would happen is as we are in lockdown people will stop meeting each other and as people stop meeting each other what would happen is the you know infection the spread of infection would break and stop now as it breaks and stops what happens 
happens is there are lesser and lesser and lesser cases. So we achieved that flatlining period around the month of September um, in which the number of cases basically are reduced. So we went up and then we went down. So which was really, really great. It was, you know, something that you know did happen at that point of time but what were the results of the lockdown in india the results of the lockdown in india again obviously were the concept that everybody had to go ahead and stay home um, it was a compulsion that everybody needed to stay home and needed to take care of themselves from home another trend that basically came into play and how people got affected was the concept of doing everything from home so here i'm going to go ahead and do simple laptop sort of like an identification for all of the time we have basically spent working from home studying from home learning from home creating from home you know everything basically that happens from home everything from home was always always justified and going out so here i'm drawing a building this could be a mall this could be school this could be you know um, any place that you want to go out to to a friend's house whatever it is was discouraged so um, you know staying at home was encouraged and going out was completely discouraged at this point of time now, next thing uh, that did happen in India after this trend that we saw was the concept of vaccination. I want to tell you when India got vaccinated for the first time. Um, around one year later from the first case in 2021 January, uh, which was basically a few months back, uh, was when the first vaccination drives started in India. The vaccination drive started off by first giving vaccinations to people who were above uh, 45 years old uh, and also then 18 years old from uh, me. Now, a little bit more about this, let's discuss. Um, first, the people who got the vaccination weren't only 45 years and above. Everybody who were part of the healthcare system and the healthcare workers were the first set of people to get the vaccination. After that, everybody who was above 45 and had comorbidities got the vaccine. Then everybody who was 45 and above and did not have comorbidities were allowed to take the vaccine. And finally, now uh, we have the COVID registrations wherein everybody who's above 18 years old can get the vaccination. In some places, that is still not allowed uh, because of the lack of vaccines that are available so that is one thing that everybody is facing now even though in january 2021 we had good news of everybody starting to get the vaccine by april um you know, the first week of April, the number of cases in India again started rising. And that is the state we are in today. We are currently in May and we have actually gone back. So I'm going to put an arrow back to um, the number of cases increasing. And I'm going to mark out 2021 with my pink sketch pen on April and 2020 in my Jan over there. Now um, I'm marking those two out because you can see that we have had the trend of second wave basically happening in India right now you all know um, you may or may not be in lockdown right now mm -hmm. so we do have a trend of um, the coronavirus again trending up like you see in this graph right here and this time it's a lot more harmful and scary All right, so like you all know, I have gone ahead and given you a complete brief of so many things today. I have discussed about where the coronavirus started from, how it traveled around the world. We spoke about how it's affected individual lives, the economy, the healthcare systems. We spoke about the symptoms. We spoke about the precautions, prevention, vaccination. And then we spoke about it in relation to India as well. Now, this was a complete, you know, uh, understanding of the whole COVID-19 situation all around the world and in India. And I hope that was really, really informative um, to you. And you got like so, so much amount of information um, from everything that I taught you today. Uh, now, exactly how I'm going ahead and explain to you, you can go ahead and give a brief to anybody and everybody. You have 
around you um, to give them an idea of a, everything that you've learned and b to create awareness in their minds as well and they could probably go ahead and tell someone else and maybe it'll come to use somewhere someday um, you know and it's going to be helpful i am again very 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 thankful for you to come ahead and join in uh, in this session with me it is you know it means so so much for you to come ahead and you know join us in raising funds for all of those people affected with covid-19 or coronavirus in india right now we are again in a very very bad state whether you are in lockdown for example in maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu pune you know wherever you are uh, delhi if you are in one of these places and are in lockdown stay home stay safe go out and if you have to get essentials if you're anywhere else and the number of cases around you are not that high still be aware follow the precautionary measures follow the preventive measures um get your friends and family um you know the elders of your family whoever is eligible for the vaccine tell them to go ahead and get the vaccine because you know it's going to be good for your society um and your friends and your colleagues and everybody else around you um i had a wonderful wonderful time uh taking this class for you and i hope i can you know meet you guys uh, once again uh, in some other session like this and i will see you there all right bye bye then thank you so much for joining in today and i will see you in the next one when we have one